not prepared for what he had asked because he asked me to speak for today and the first thing that came out of my mouth was mm, nah, I don't mind teaching but speaking I'm kind of I'm not really good at but then I heard in the back of my head I'm going to give you what to say and when I heard that I told Bishop, fine, I would do it. And as usual, I'm up here shaking like a leaf because this is not my normal place. But this, this being the first feast of the year has a lot of significance. We were talking in the Sabbath school today about the reason that the Messiah sacrificed himself, the importance of that unleavened bread, the importance of what it represents. It represents purity. It represents getting rid of sin and, and getting rid of things that doesn't belong to you. The flesh says it belongs to you, but Yah says it doesn't belong to us, and we keep claiming things that don't belong to us. So... I was speaking to the Father, and I'm like, Father, whatever you say, I'll do. Whatever you tell me to speak, I'm going to speak. And he asked me a question, and it really made me think. He's like, he, the question he asked was, after the feast is over, After the feast is over, will you be so quick to return to that unleavened bread? You know? And it really made me think, it's like, what are we, how quick are we to turn back to the always? But yet, he's given us new life. You know, I can't promise not to be up here for a short period of time. I'm going to be here as long as he tells me to stand here. But he's given me something to give to everyone. I'm going to first go to Genesis chapter 19, verses 1 through 3. Genesis chapter 19, verses 1 through 3. And there came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold, now, my Lord, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and I will wash your feet, and you shall rise up and go your way. You should, I'm sorry. You rather them go your way. And they said, nay, but we were by in the street all night. I'm sorry, I said one, two, three. I'm going way past three. And he pressed upon them greatly and turned to them and said, enter this house. And he made a feast and did break unleavened bread. And they did eat. 
There's a significance to unleavened bread. A huge significance to unleavened bread. Unleavened bread is a representation of purity, untaintedness. Turn with me to Numbers chapter 6, starting at verse 13. What I'm going to do, I'm going to read a few scriptures before I get into the message. Number six, begin at 13. And this is the law of the Nazarite. When the days of his separation are fulfilled, he shall be brought unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. He shall offer up an offering unto the Lord. One, he lamb of the first year without blemish for a burnt offering. One, you lamb for the first year for, for a sin offering. And one, ram without blemish for a peace offering. And a basket of unleavened bread and cakes of fine flour mingled with oil and wafers of unleavened bread anointed with oil and their meat offering and their drink offering. Just bear with me. Just hang tight. Going to Judges 6, 19. And Gideon went in and he made ready a kid and unleavened cakes and eat off of flour. The flesh he put in a basket and he put the broth in a pot and he brought it out unto him under the oak and presented it. And the angel of God said unto him, take the flesh and the unleavened cakes and lay them up on this rock and pour out the broth. And he did so. Then the angel of the Lord put forth, put forth the end of the staff that was in his hand and touched the flesh and unleavened cakes. And there arose a fire up out of the rock and consumed the flesh and the unleavened cakes. Then the angel of the Adonai disappeared. The unleavened cakes. Leavening is a representation of sin. Leaven shows that we are, I'm going to stop there for a second. The Father does not want a sinful offering. The Father does not want an offering that is tainted, that has filth and mire in it. The Father is requiring of us an offering of unleavened. If you notice back in these scriptures, everything that was given to the father's representatives and to the father in our offering was unleavened. It's clean. It's undefiled. It doesn't have any muck or mire in it. It doesn't have anything in it that is going to be that, that that's going to bring shame to the father. It's all pure. When we're thinking about these unleavened cakes, and when we're thinking about the end of the of of, of the feast of unleavened bread. How quickly are we going to go back to these things that were once comfortable to us? He gave us a reason for the unleavened. The unleavened, the reason we go supposed to take get rid of the leavening in our bodies is so that we can be pure for him. So that when we give him praise, our praise is pure, it's unadulterated. So when we go before him and we bow our faces down on the ground, we can be received because what we're giving him is, is pure. It's 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 not filled with malice or greed or hatred or, or sinful lust and things of that nature. What are we going to do when this feast is over? Do we go back to our regular lives? Do we go back to the point where, do we go, do we, do we go back to where we were before? We were talking about in the Sabbath school this morning about how when we get to a place the Father brings us to, though our journeys may be different, we're all trying to get to the same mountaintop. 
Though our journeys may be take one person's journey may take longer than the next person, but we're still trying to get to the top of this mountain. You can't get to the mountain if you're full of filth. You can't get to the mountaintop if you have hatred in your heart. Scripture asks you, the scripture tells you, he says, how can a man love God if he hates his brother? If he hates his brother, he's a murderer. And that don't just mean hating you. That means me hating a man on the street. Because guess what? We are all brothers in the eyes of the father. How do we present ourselves to a father who is pure, who is light, who is, is, is loving, who is kind, who teaches us everything that we need to know? How do we present ourselves before him knowing full well we are full of guile? How do we present ourselves before him knowing full well that in our hearts we're not what we're supposed to be? But yet we still go before a father asking him for things that we don't deserve. We got some gall up in ourselves to want to go before a, a, a perfect Adonai. An Adonai of perfection, flawed, bringing flawed things to him. We've got some nerve trying to go up and present ourselves up at the top of this mountain and think we're going to be received. How do you think you're going to be received when you're full of filth? How do we think we're going to get anywhere when we've got chains holding on to us that we're still trying to drag around? We're holding on to these balls and these chains. The locks are there. But guess what? Just like we said in Sabbath school. He's already given us the key to release ourselves. He's given us this key to release our bonds. He's given us the ability to go before him because guess what? He's the key holder. He's the key holder. When we go before the Father, we're supposed to go before him with a sacrifice of praise. Anywhere the sacrifice of praise is used, you see nothing leaven. When they made sacrifices, there was no leaven in anything they made a sacrifice with. The flour had no leaven. The cakes had no leaven. Nothing had leaven in it. It was sent up pure and unadulterated. This is how our praise is supposed to be. But we can Praise like that if we are carrying sin behind us. If we're still chained up to sin, we can't give him the praise he truly deserves. Think about this. When your children come to you and they ask you for things that you know they've been cutting up, you know they've been doing things that they're not supposed to be doing, are you really willing to sit up and give your child what they ask for just because they're your child? Do you really want to reward ill behavior? He's no different. As a matter of fact, he's even worse. The wrath he brought down on Israel is the things we don't want to see anymore. We are already in captivity, but yet we try to send ourselves further into captivity because we don't want to release those things that are holding on to us. We don't want to release those things that we've become comfortable to, those things that have been, that have, that have been part of our nature for so long. Lustful ways, demonic ways, the, the, the alcohol, drugs, all these things that hold us back, that we keep lying, stealing. These things that hold us back from the Father. We can't go before the Father talking about, Father, I need you to bless me, what you just stole from the man over here. We can't go before the Father sitting beside the talking about, Father, forgive me my ways. When you're going to continuously do things over and over and over. Why? Because you're still dragging those chains behind you. You're still dragging that big giant cannonball that had to hook up to the chain to keep you from running. We cannot give the Father a praise of defilement. We have to give him an unleavened praise full of purity full of grace, full of honor, things that he's going to be proud of. Our journeys may be different, but the goal is the same. 
We got to get to that mountaintop. We got to get to Zion. We got to be up there when Jerusalem comes down. We got to be able to enter into these gates. But we can't enter the gates full of mess. We cannot enter the gates holding on to things that held us bound. We can't get into these gates allowing the enemy to whisper in our ears and falling for these tricks. He is a destroyer of the soul. He is a murderer and a thief. He comes to destroy everything you work for. He's come to steal your joy. He's come to sit up and have you killed because you can't make it to the kingdom. The enemy wants you to fail. He wants you to be full of leaven. He wants your bread to rise. Don't let the bread rise. Scripture says a little lump, a little leaven, leavens the whole lump. Just a little bit messes up everything. One airing you out if you get caught up in your sin. If we get caught up in the wrong situation, we don't get to see the kingdom. We don't get to go before him and praise him, bowing down before him with palm branches and crying, holy, holy, holy. We get to cry, hey, it's hot in here. Turn on the AC. We don't get that. We don't get the pleasures of being, being able to to, 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 for him to put a crown of a, a, a crown on our heads because we worked and not because we deserved it because we found us worthy because we worked so hard and we did not give up the whole we got to clean ourselves up people we have to clean ourselves all the way through from the from the bottom of our feet to the tops of our heads, we have to cleanse ourselves through and through. Not just for us. Not just for your own soul. Not for your own salvation. Your little ones. They are watching everything you do. And don't, and, 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 and it's not do as I told you to do because they ain't hearing that. You know how you was when you loaded your parents said, do as I say, not as I do. But guess what? You did what you you did what? You did what you saw them do, didn't you? We have to clean ourselves up because our generations, four, fifth, and sixth generations are depending on us. If we fail or we dishonor the father, the third and fourth generations fall because of the iniquities of the fathers. Of the fathers. Not the mothers, the fathers. Because he holds us in charge. We have us, we have, he puts us up as the head. And as the head, everything relies on us. When Eve ate of that fruit, Adam could have said, I ain't touching that thing. And then things may have been a whole lot different. But because he didn't hold to his position, he didn't hold to his authority, he lost. We lost out on paradise. But we still can get paradise. But we got to clean ourselves up. We got to take that bread that we have that's in the oven and make sure there's nothing in it that's going to taint it. Nothing in it that's going to cause ill will or violence or anger upon people. We've got to calm these things. We've got to quench these things. We've got to quench these fires before they even begin. We were talking to Sabbath school today, and we mentioned that even with the Holy Spirit, sometimes we err because we'll say things to people, and they will take it wrong, or we say it in a way that they that we say, or we'll say it in a way where we mean it well, but they see aggression or anger or or and things of that nature, and it comes to them wrongly. We've got to fix that thing. At that moment, the moment you see they first twist up, stop that thing. We got to, the, the moment that, that, that you see they face twist up, correct yourself. Because guess what? Somehow they received you incorrectly. But guess what? Their anger at you is going to be held on you. Because you are the one who opened your mouth. You are the one who said what you had to say. But the way that you said it, 
is everything. The way, you know, and, and you know, I'm the first partaker of this because y'all know I, I shoot right off the top of my head a lot of times. Y'all know I'm the first partaker of this, you know. But the thing is, the father has been working with me to be more diplomatic, not political, diplomatic, more soft with the words I say, less directness. What not? No, I'm sorry. Still direct, but in a way that is not so offending to people. Because the word will bring an offense, but it's not supposed, you're not supposed to bring an offense. The word will bring an offense to someone who is not wanting to hear that word, but you don't bring that offense. That the word can victim. We are not judges. We were not appointed judges. We were not appointed to, 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 to tell people what's going to happen with them that is outside the word. We don't have a heaven nor a lake of fire to put anybody in. We don't own it. We're going to be we, scarcely. If we make it, we're scarcely going to make it in ourselves. We don't own it. We have no business putting anybody in it. Everybody's journey is different. Because my journey went straight up the mountain don't mean yours won't go all the way around it a thousand times before you reach that top. We got to stop being so, what's the word I'm looking for? We got to stop being so holier than thou that we cause the people to err. We got to stop being so holier than thou that we make the word non effect because guess what? People don't want to hear that holier than thou. You're going to hell. You're going to hell. You're going to hell. And, 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 you, the people aren't, that's not for the word of the people. The people, the word is because of these things that you are doing, you are in at risk of making the lake of fire. Only the father can come and cleanse you up. My grandmother, when I, I told, I, when I told it, uh, my testimony this morning about my grandmother, when I was, when I, when I, when Monk was really young. And she told me when I was, when I walked up to her and she looked me square in my face, nothing else just flat out said. And she just looked at me, she says, you come to him as you are and let him clean you up. Those words show no judgment. Those words show no accusation. Those words show, she knows, now, now mind you, this is my grandmother. She knows some of the dirt I've done. Probably almost all of it. But she didn't come to me with a judging spirit. She came to me with a spirit that was love, untainted, unleavened, and brought it. And because of this, the father was able, to, because of those kind words and her prayers for me, the father was able to do a work in me. I was a wretch undone, I'm telling you. But he's cleaning me up. He's cleaning me up. It's a daily process. But in this process, guess what I'm willing to do? I'm willing to go back down on my face daily and ask for repentance. Because guess what? I'm not perfect yet. I'm striving for perfection, but I ain't there yet. I'm striving for it. Every day I wake up, there's one more step toward that perfection, toward that unleavened offering. One more day I wake up is that, is, is that one more foot effort going up this mountain. If there's a tree in the way, I can go under it, I can go over it, I can go around it, or I can go through it. That unleavened offering, that unleavened offering of praise, this is what he desires from us. But we can't give it to him going back to the old ways. These holy days are more than just a memorial of, uh, of, 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 of what has happened. It's what to come. It's a thing, it's, it's a representation of what is coming. Every day when we get to the, if we make it to the kingdom, every day is a Shabbat. Every day. And every year we're still going to make that journey to the, to, to the mountain up to where? We're going to tabernacle with him every year. These, these, these holy days are more than what people give it credit for. It's not just a memorial for yesterday. Yesterday's gone. We still got a whole future. Look, 
He didn't tell us to separate, keep these things through our whole generation just so we could just say it's for yesterday. Each generation is coming. We got to show these generations. We got to show them everything that we can do and then let them teach us when they get to the point where, 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 where they even know more than we do. Each generation picks up more and more. The word is coming faster now than it ever has. And the world is trying to shut it down. They're trying to get rid of Bibles. They're trying to get rid of anything that's going to cause a person to have a conviction of the heart. They want corruption. They want a leavened praise. They don't want an undefiled praise. They want things messed up so that whenever, when, so they can, because mm. I'm telling you, the enemy is a trickster. The enemy does not want you to make it to the kingdom. He knows the end of his road. He knows the end of his journey. And he's trying not to go alone. Yeah, he's got his angels going. But guess what? The lake wasn't meant for us. But guess what? There's a whole lot of folks going. The scripture even tells you that because of so many people going, that the walls, that the, that the, that, that, that heaven has expanded. That has expanded its. I mean, I have uh, the, uh, the lake of fire has expanded itself. It has gotten bigger, bigger and bigger, and this world is trying to increase it and increase it and increase it more and more, more sin, more this, more that. Every time you look on TV, I can't get up. I hate. I can't even watch Disney. I'm being honest. I can't even watch Disney. Disney used to be one of them, well, I ain't going to say one of them because Disney was kind of racist back in the day, but <laughs> but Disney, but I, from the time when I was a child coming up, these, the, these movies were things that kids wanted to see. Now you have homosexuality in Disney. You have homosexuality in Warner Brothers. You have homosexuality everywhere you look. I can't even watch TV. I hate it. I do not. I, I hate watching television. Why? Because there's so much filth coming through that television. People ask me, have you seen this? I'll be like, I don't hardly watch TV. If it ain't the news, I ain't watching it. And they look at me like I'm crazy. But you got to think. Paul said that Satan is the God of the what? He's the God of the what comes through the air? Televisions, radios, uh, uh, internet, gossip. Your mouth goes to there. Anything that you say comes out your mouth, transfers through the air called sound waves. Satan is the god of the air. We have to be careful what we spitting out of our mouths. We have to be careful what we're allowing to get into our eye gates. Because every, th this world is trying to taint us. They're trying to make us fall. Why? Because there are powers and principalities and, and works that we don't see, but the, but the Father does. We battle within ourselves, but around us there's still constant battles for us going on. We battle within ourselves. Now, even though we're battling within ourselves, there are still other battles that are being fought for us. There are angels who are coming into our defense because we, the, 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 Satan is looking to, to, to sift us. He's looking to destroy us, cut us down, toss us into the fire as chaff. He's looking for us to be destroyed. Ha, ha, I got him. He's like, I got him. Every time, he, every time we lose one, he's up. I got him. I got him. Now he's going to be in there with me. This, this unadulterated praise this unleavened praise. We can't go back to the ways that we used to be. Ever. This holy day, this holy convocation, this holy week is so that we don't turn back. We don't turn back away from the glory that he has given us. For he is full of glory, but he's given us some of him so that we can be lights to the world. And that we may operate so they can see the light that's coming from us and want to glorify him. We can't go back to these old ways. We can't go back to the leaven in our bread. I, I, I kid you not. I told my daughter the other day. I said, you know what? 
I said, I don't even think I'm going to buy bread anymore. I said, I'm just going to keep making unleavened bread all year round. Simple because, not, not simply because, not because it's, 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 it helps me to remind myself every time I've eaten that unleavened bread to keep that mess out of me that don't belong to me. To get rid of that stuff in me that he doesn't want me to have. He's given me the key. I just got to unlock the locks. He's giving you the keys. All you got to do is release yourselves. Call on his name. Call on his name. Beg for Don't ask for it. Beg for that Ruach. Beg for the Ruach HaKadosh to be put in you. Because that is the way you're going to fight. You can't fight this battle alone. You can't get these chains off thinking that you have it yourself. You're going to find yourself in a deeper pit. Call on the Father. Get that Ruach. Get that Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit that's going to convict you because you do it something wrong. Or you even think something wrong. That spirit that's going to correct you when you, when, when you even have the inkling to want to And it's not going to let you sin. It's not going to let you. It's going to let you know ahead of time, hey, 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 hey. This ain't it. It's going to stop you dead in your tracks. That Ruach is so important. And um, the Ruach... Yahushua died for us. But the purpose of his death was not only for him to be a mediator, but so that he could send back the comforter. That comforter that's going to lead and guide you. Who's going to teach you, who's going to give you good discernment, not personal idea. Who's going to work in you a work that cannot be undone. This whole thing about the unleavened bread has meaning. It's got way more meaning than what you could ever dream of. Because guess what? It's more than just eating the bread. It's a sacrifice that comes with it. It's more than just Taking that bread, breaking it, putting it in your mouth, drinking your drink. It's a sacrifice that comes with it. Because guess what? That was a sacrifice. A sacrifice that we don't ever have to. We're not out here chasing deer and lamb and things anymore. We're not sitting up having to get the, the lamb and then and, 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 and the night and, and putting, it on, putting the blood on our doors, on our lentils and our posts. We're not having to do that any longer. He nailed that thing. He became that last sacrifice. So who are we to sit up there and continue to live in sin? We can't judge another person's walk, but we can judge ourselves. The scripture tells you clearly, judge yourselves less what? You also be judged because guess what? Again, because you know what you do. Every day you look yourself in the mirror, you know who you see. You know the person that's behind that mirror who you're looking back at. You know what's going on through their mind. You, nobody else does. You can live in the same house with 10 people. Nobody knows you. You can be around somebody all your life and they don't know you. Only you know you. And every time you look in that mirror, if you see something unclean, you better get up and you better get on your face. You better repent and go before the Father. Father, take this thing from me. Take this, and, say, and, say, and be just like Yahushua. If it's your will, take this cup from me. Because guess what? Only he can cleanse you. Every time you look in the mirror and when you see something that just ain't right, Go down. Go down. Beg for forgiveness. Don't go there and say, Father, repent. Father, please forgive me. Father, please, I did not mean for this to happen. Father, strengthen me against this next attack because it's going to come. There's going to be another. If you fall for one, then Satan is going to try to trick you with something else. There's going to be constant attacks. 
Constant, constant, constant. But we have to cleanse ourselves so that the Ruach has a place to live. It will not live in an unclean temple. Cleanse yourself. Get rid of that leaven so that the Ruach has a place to live. Don't clean yourself and then get rid of what's in there and clean it up just for seven more worse than him to come back in. Cleanse yourself. Fill your house up with the Holy Ghost. Fill your house with the Holy Spirit. Don't leave those doors and windows open for something that's to come through the window. That's coming through to destroy you. Clean. When you clean your house, you allow it to be filled with goodness. You allow it to be filled with grace and mercy. You show grace and mercy. You show forgiveness. Despite what's going on in your past life, despite what's happened to you, despite who you had, who you'd had arguments with, get rid of that thing. Get rid of it. It does not belong to you. Let that thing go. Why? Your life depends on it. Not only your life, but the lives of your children. Everything you do, these little sponges just squeeze it right back out at you. So when they see you living an unrighteous life, they're going to give you an unrighteous life. But when they see you living a life and you're trying to be holy and you're trying to do everything you can to stay within the will of a father, they're going to be kids and rebel, but they're going to respect you. That's why the scripture says, raise up a child in the way that it should go. And when they are what? Old, they will not depart. It does not mean that they are actually going to fall before then, but it gives them something to come back to. It gives them something when they're like, you know what? I remember when my mama did this. I remember when my grandmama did it. I remember when my daddy did this. And then they remember. And then the father, then they remember. And then they remember they can do what? They can go down and repent. They remember that they can go down and be cleansed. And start their first work over again. Go back to their first love. When they were children, they had a huge love for him. Then they, but as the world comes through and tries to destroy them, they got to have that foundation, that cornerstone that no man wanted. They called it a stumbling block. But it's a stumbling block against the who? Against the wicked. It's not a stumbling block for us who know. It's a stumbling block for the wicked. Give your children something to come back to. Don't show them leaven. Show them a pure and unadulterated life. Don't be having your house filled with things that don't belong there. Don't be inviting in things that don't supposed to live there. Clean your house. This house. Because guess what? Despite what goes on, they, your children can't see you. Despite what you do and what you try to hide, guess what? They still see you. Because they still see the evidence. No matter how you try to hide what you do, they still see the evidence. Because your children know how you normally act. And then when you do something out of place. Get rid of that leaven. Do not let that leaven come back into your life. When these days are over, don't pick that thing back up. If you are, if you have truly left these things alone during this week, You've got no need to pick it back up. Because guess what? When you took that bread, that was the, the unleavened bread, you left that stuff behind. Leave it there. Unloose those chains of bondage. Cut those locks off of you. Get the, he, he's got the key. Go down, repent. Do your first works over. And leave it. Don't go back to it. If you're treating this holy week as it's supposed to be, Unleavened, you're supposed to have left all that stuff behind. And just because it ends in seven days, doesn't mean your struggle ends in seven days. You leave that thing behind. Because if you pick it back up after seven days, you might as well just kept on eating bread this week. 
If you pick that thing back up after these seven days, you might as well not even dealt with the sacrifice. Because it meant nothing to you other than a ritual. You know, the most high is when he's when he, he shows me things sometimes, and I wanna the flesh of me is like, do you rip really? Do I really have to? But the spirit of me is like, you better shut up and get this done. Leave that thing alone. You see what it's bringing. You see that you, you, the, you ain't even really got dealing with this thing. You see the hell it's already bringing into your life. Put that thing down. It's not yours. You'll know when I give you something. Because it's going to come without sorrow. It's going to come untainted. It's going to come in perfection. It's going to come. It's not going to come wearing a big bow. But it's going to come with open arms. It's going to let you know, hey, I'm from him. That car that you so-called want, it might not be what you need. That house that you so-called want to own right now, it might not be your time. That wife or that husband you so desire, it might not be on time for you right now. Because he's still trying to do a work in you. And he knows that if he gives you those things now, your mind is going to take off. He knows that your mind is going to wander off from him. You ever wonder why we're not supposed to be trying to play the lottery? Because a rich man's mind is not on the father. Rich man's mind, rich man's mind is on his riches. You know why we're not supposed to do things that the world does? Because that's what will be on our minds and not him. We have to come with an unadulterated, pure, As a driven snow prays, but you can't if you come in with leaven. You can't bring that to you can't bring this thing to the Father if you're full of it. And you know what I was, you know what I mean. Full of unle- full of leaven. Thank you. But you understand what I'm saying is that we cannot come before Him full of mess and think that He is going to receive our praise. He does not hear. The prayer of the sinner. And don't think because we worship, you're, he's listening to your prayers. Because guess what? If you live an unrighteous life, he's not listening to you either. But as Bishop so eloquently put it in Sabbath school, he might not hear you. But those who are praying for you who are righteous, he's hearing them. So the, so while he wasn't listening to you, you've got a righteous person praying for you. And praying Earnestly, for the prayers of the righteous availeth much. And I thank you, Father. Thank you. (laughs) That's how I say this thing because he just made me happy. But the thing is, we have to come before him clean inside. If you are out here working on a job and you're sweating, your inside still needs to be clean. If you are out here working on a job and you're shoveling manure, your inside still has to be clean. Because he's not judging you by what you have on. He's judging by what you're wearing inside. He's judging by what you're wearing inside. The Father has been so great for me, my personal life, And I know he's going to be great in all of your lives. Because we are here, not out of tradition, because we have a yearning to be made perfected in him. We have a yearning to be perfected in him. We're not here for for tradition. Tradition means you're just going to do something over and over and over again, whether it has meaning or not. There's a lot of tradition out there. There's a lot of tradition that even even this week is tainted by a tradition that never existed. While we're while we're up here trying to get the leaven out, we're up here trying to get the leaven out. They're trying to shove it back into us. 
They want you to believe that at a day and a half, when Yahushua said he was going to be in the ground for three days and three nights, then a day and a half that he rose, a day and a half later. So he went down on Friday afternoon and rose early on Sunday morning. But that don't add up. That don't add up. And the one thing about the father, he don't make mistakes. You were born a man, you're a man. You're born a woman, you're a woman. You're born an evangelist, you're an evangelist. You're born a preacher, you're a preacher. You're born a bishop, you're a bishop. He don't make mistakes. You know, as much as we sometimes we want to fight with him because we feel that we are unworthy or undeserving, he sees more in us than we see in ourselves. Well, we're, even though we're judging ourselves, he still sees us in a way that we can't imagine. But he wants us to come to him clean, undefiled, with a heart of repentance and forgiveness and understanding and mercy and grace, long-suffering. These are the things that he's desiring for us to, to do and give him back because we not only are we doing this for him, we're doing it for the stranger on the street. Because we can't hate our brother. He's still your brother. He come from the same mother, same father as we did. Adam and Eve, he's still your brother. But we can't hold crookedness and think we're going to be able to get somewhere. We can't hold righteousness and think we're going to be blessed. We can't hold evil in our hearts and think there's going to be peace in our house. It's not going to happen. And we cannot go before him unworthily. We cannot go before him unworthily. Cleanse yourself up. Leave this stuff alone. Leave what you dropped at the door. Don't go back and pick it back up. Don't pick it back up. It's just that simple. Open your heart. Let the Ruach HaKadosh come in and rule, and rule in you. See, that's the difference between it coming in. It can come in just sit in the corner. Because he's going to be, a, as, 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 as I heard someone say before, he's a gentleman. He's going he, to step back and let you do what you want to do. But if you let it rule you, you're not going to have a desire to do those things. You don't desire to want, you don't desire the sinful acts. You don't desire the anger. You don't desire the discomfort. You don't desire the hatred. You don't desire thiefing and whatever else. You desire to be pure. You desire to want to worship the Father. You desire to want to give him everything he deserves because he deserves all our praise. But it's got to be clean. We can't come before the Father with a hatred in our heart and think that he's going to hear us. We can't come before him with a desire to do something that is not of him and think he's going to bless this thing. He's not going to hear it. So in closing, all I'm going to say is we need the Father to cleanse us. But for him to cleanse us, we have to let go of those things that are holding us bound. We have to let go of that leaven that's causing things to continuously rise. We have to let go of those things. Every time you let go of something, but you're still holding on to that one little piece. We have to let go of that back leaven that's making the bread rise. Things to continuously rise and rise and rise. We gotta every time you let go of something, let that go. One little piece, and let him rule us. And making the bread in rise all again. aspects of our lives, we gotta we gotta allow we gotta him learn to, to come let in and step go. in and want to call us his and children. let him rule us. Want to call us his in all aspects of our lives. We gotta allow him to. We come can't be in a step in if we want to call us his children. Want to call us his inheritance. You don't get to see the glory. You don't get to see the honor in the end. We can't be an inheritance. If we are here acting on rapture, 
There is no heritage. So don't pick these things back up. You don't get to see the glory. You don't get you to see the honor in the end. Where you left them before the feast. Take hold of that unleavened bread. Forever. Don't pick these things back up. Offer up a praise as until you left them before the feast. Offer up a praise that's going to bring him glory and take hold of that unleavened bread. Offer up a praise that's going to make him smile. Offer up a praise that's untainted. Offer up a praise that's going to bring him glory and honor. Let that thing go. Offer up a praise that's going to make you smile. Let those things stay behind you. Don't pick them up anymore. Release those things that held you bound. Let that thing go. Reach for it. Let those things stay behind you. <laughs> Don't pick them up anymore. Release those things that held you bound. He has the key. Reach for it. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Y'all yeah, sent us a message on today. Hallelujah. I hope you received. Hallelujah. They sent us a message on today. Hallelujah. And, and when I'm oftentimes talking with others, y'all yeah, sent us a message on today. Let's, first of all, let's give y'all. Yeah.